So pneumonia is infection in the lung. This is going to cause inflammation and fluid buildup. Now, the fluid inside the lung is actually called two things, consolidation and infiltration. Consolidation means that the alveoli have become filled with fluid and can no longer provide the gas exchange. Infiltration means patchy areas of fluid in the lung. This fluid in the lung is what causes the decrease in gas exchange and it's what causes the patient to have a difficulty time breathing. Pneumonia can be caused by several things. By far, one of the most common things is the flu. Influenza causes pneumonia. First, the patient gets infected with a flu virus and then they end up getting pneumonia. The patient can also aspirate on something and then it causes the pneumonia. The patient can also be immobile, especially after surgery, and fluid can build up in the lungs. The patient can also get very specific types of pneumonia because they're immunosuppressed. This is usually due to chemo and AIDS. There's different types of pneumonias, like community-acquired pneumonia, which is usually not too bad, aspirating pneumonia when, they, when someone inhales something, opportunistic pneumonia when someone's immunosuppressed, like chemo and AIDS, medical care-associated pneumonia, which really is two things, hospital-acquired pneumonia, which means the patient gets it in the hospital and it's usually a really bad pneumonia, or ventilator-associated pneumonia, meaning they're on a ventilator with a tube down their throat that's having them breathe and they get pneumonia because of it. Since pneumonia is an infection in the lungs, the patient's going to have signs and symptoms of infection, like fever, which is a temperature above 100.4, chills, shortness of breath, and increase in WBCs. Normal WBCs is five to 10,000, so it's gonna be above 10,000. The patient can also have crackles. This is because of the fluid that's in the lung. When you try to auscultate the breaths, always auscultate the back lower lobes. I noticed that it's really difficult to hear uh, crackles from the front, but it's a lot easier to hear them from the back. Older adults can get altered mental status, which means they get confused. Sometimes the older adults won't even spike a fever. The last thing you need to know is that the patient's going to have a productive cough. Productive means something is coming out. That something is going to be sputum. Now it can be green, yellow, or red, which means it's bloody. Yellow, green means infection. Now there's two main complications that I want to talk about. The first one is respiratory failure. This means the pneumonia gets so bad that the patient's respiratory system starts failing. It doesn't work anymore. Initially, the patient's going to have dyspnea and tachypnea, so they have a hard time breathing like pneumonia. But then they'll start having something called intercostal retractions, which means you can see their ribs. This is because the intercostal muscles are being sucked in with each breath. The patient can also have a decreased level of consciousness, which means they'll be lethargic or zomnulence. Both of those means less alert, so more sleepy, and they can also be really restless. Then the patient eventually will get cyanotic, so they'll start to turn blue, and then their breathing rate is actually going to slow down. So it can go from something like being in the 30s all the way to being down below 10. If you see a patient having these symptoms, make sure you follow up. This is an emergency. The next complication is something called pleuroeffusion, and I actually want to talk about that a little more. Pleuroeffusion means that there's more fluid in the pleural space than they're supposed to be. Usually this is caused by pneumonia, which we're talking about, heart failure, cirrhosis, or cancer. But there's a whole bunch of other reasons too. The main sign and symptom of pleuroeffusion is something called pleurisy or pleuritis. This is a sharp pain when inhaling. Now the reason this happens is because the two layers, the two pleural layers are actually inflamed and they're rubbing each other. And that's what's leading to the pain. The patient can also have something called pleural friction rub, which is when you auscultate their breath sounds, you're going to hear a harsh grating sound. Again, this is the pleural layers rubbing against each other because they're inflamed. The diagnostic is going to be a chest x-ray, and the treatment is going to be something called a thoracentesis. This is when the doctor goes into the patient's pleural space with a needle and withdraws some of the fluid out, sometimes for diagnostic testing, but also as a therapeutic treatment. Now, your job during the thoracentesis is to position the patient upright with their arms over a table. You also wanna note how much is coming out. Now, usually it's somewhere around 1500, but if it's more than that, you wanna make sure you monitor for hypovolemia. And if you remember the signs and symptoms of hypovolemia when someone's losing fluid, you remember that first the pulse goes up, then the blood pressure drops later. 
If you already see a patient that has low blood pressure or elevated pulse after a thoracentesis, you want to call the doctor. The next thing you need to know is that the patient is going to experience pain with this procedure. There may also be a small amount of bleeding expected. All right, now we're going to talk about pneumonia again. So the diagnostics for pneumonia is going to be a chest x-ray and sputum cultures. You have to know how to get sputum cultures. So you're going to have to have the patient do a forceful cough so they can get it out. And if they can't get it out, you're going to have to suction it out. Make sure you collect it first thing in the morning. So it's got to be the first thing they do. The chest x-ray for pneumonia is generally going to have these white patchy areas. These are areas of infiltrate and you can see the arrows pointing at them. For nursing interventions, the first thing you want to do is put this patient on droplet precautions. This is because they can spread the pneumonia around and you want to protect yourself. To help the patient get better faster, we want to have the patient cough, deep breathe, and use the incentive spirometer. This is to open up any alveoli that have collapsed, also called atelectasis. We also want to mobilize the patient's secretions, and this can be done with chest physiotherapy, which usually the respiratory therapist does it, fluids, and the last thing you want to do is suction them. Also make sure you position this patient with a bad lung up and their good lung down. So the medical interventions. Before the patient even gets pneumonia, we can actually prevent it with something called a pneumococcal vaccine to prevent pneumonia. This is for patients who are 65 years and older and they want to get this every five years. We can also give the influenza vaccine, and this is to prevent influenza, which often causes the pneumonia every single year. Now, the medications for pneumonia, the treatment is antibiotics, and there is a whole bunch of antibiotics that can be given, like all of these. If you haven't already, check out the video on antibiotics where I explain all of these. All right, guys, that's everything you need for pneumonia.